All right. Hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll bring up the energy right before we head out for our networking break, I hope. So, um, hi. My name is Darren Scheyer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Voyager Space Technologies, and we're working on software that makes it easier to design and develop spacecraft. So, to kick off our conversation, I wanted to bring up to the high level something that has been discussed a lot here over the conference, um, and, and that is that as we're seeing lower cost of launch and increased frequency of launch, we're seeing a much higher demand for spacecraft, which is really exciting. And the reason why this is exciting is as we have a higher demand for spacecraft and as we're able to do it cheaper and more efficiently, we're now starting to realize some of the most exciting things that has been dreamed about since the, 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 Apollo, uh, the Apollo era. That, that being uh, resource extraction and robotic infrastructure in space, making stuff in space. I don't know if you saw the panel earlier today, but Main Space is doing some really cool things with, with their, their on-orbit capabilities. But you see, as we're expecting this proliferation of spacecraft, something hasn't changed over the last few years that'll enable it. And, and, and that is, for the last 30 years or so, designing spacecraft and designing any advanced mechanical system, for that matter, has remained relatively unchanged. And let me explain that a little bit further. So typically what happens is you get a customer who comes in and gives you a list of requirements. It's a long laundry list. I want my satellite to go into this orbit. It needs to take this data, so on and so forth. And that's turned into analyses. By, the engineers then take that, turn it into an analysis, um, which is then turned into a spacecraft. And to think about that even further, uh, this is handed over to a highly interdisciplinary team because a satellite is a really large, complex system. You've got electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, software engineers, all working together to make an integrated system. But all of these engineers are operating in silos. And what I mean by that is that, let's say you were going to run an analysis on your batteries. The only way you know if you, how it affects, say, the solar panels or your thermal analysis is you've got to go over and you've got to set up a meeting or you've got to send over an email to understand how that affects the other person next to you. And, and the end result of that is you have a large team of systems engineers tracking all of these changes through a myriad of spreadsheets and it really slows down the process and I'm seeing a few solemn nods in, in the crowd because this is frankly one of the more painful parts of of building a spacecraft. And if you, if you imagine this with me for a moment, that if there's a lot of changes throughout the life cycle of a spacecraft, and I guarantee you there are, while you're communicating with management and you're communicating with your customers and within the entire team, can really take a long time, especially when a, building a spacecraft requires a lot of interdependent systems. And on average, we're talking about six, year, six months to two years to design a spacecraft. Uh, Last year alone, the industry spent one and a half billion dollars designing brand new spacecraft. And as we're expecting a, a vast number of satellites and other spacecraft technologies to come on in, in, in the next 30 years or so, we, we really need to find better ways of doing this. A little bit about myself. Uh, I was always really excited about going and building spacecraft. And I was 14 when I found out that you could go and mine the moon for helium-3 and go and use that for creating clean nuclear fusion energy here on Earth. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. I went to study aerospace engineering so I could figure out how to do this. We, we created a CubeSat team to compete in the NASA CubeQuest competition. And I'm proud to say that we are one of the top teams in the nation, but it was, it was in designing the spacecraft that was supposed to go to the moon and, and communicate back to Earth that we realized there's a large problem when you're trying to communicate across 30 or so engineers who are developing a spacecraft um, and, and, and keeping updated with the requirements and where the analyses are and how it affects your bottom line. And when I went to go work at Moon Express and when I went to go work at SpaceX, I saw this problem continue on in the industry. Um, and we believe this could be done much better. So at Voyager Space Technologies, we're developing an intelligent software solution called SAP Builder that allows engineers to input their mission requirements, what orbit is their spacecraft going to, what, how much power does it need, and we'll tell them all the commercially, com commercially available compatible parts that meet that mission spec, and as well as deducing all, and, uh, all of the analyses into a single beautiful dashboard and helping to go through some of the initial proposal modeling. 
The goal here is to focus on the utility of what these spacecraft are doing and not getting caught up on the rocket science. We want to get past that as, as an industry so that we can go do bigger, better things and start to abstract the science. Moreover, we're creating a more efficient design process and a streamline the vendor interaction so that we can just move faster altogether. So this is SAP Builder. This is where engineers are able to go and they can connect their analyses. They can go and connect them and then they're able to input their own analyses that they already have existing, whether it be a MATLAB script or a Python script or an Excel script or a spreadsheet, uh, and they can run it there. And then they're given a beautiful dashboard that breaks down all this information and, and, and shows it against all their mission requirements to see how what they're doing affects the rest of the mission, giving them complete contextual awareness of how what they do affects others. And then lastly, we have a, a, a long uh, database of all the commercially available components in the industry so that engineers can go and plug and play the ones that work for them. And using a machine learning and artificially intelligent software, over time it gets smarter and smarter as you populate it with new proposals, new missions, and that way you can do it much faster. So as soon as you input your requirements, you can see all the previous missions that you've done and change it out so that it meets your mission requirement right away. Uh, so, and, and we're the only ones that are bringing together the database of components with this models-based systems engineering approach to going and, 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 and solving some of these really complicated designs. So our go-to market strategy, we're, we're headed after some of the large satellite manufacturers. I think it's a good, they have a large pain point in this area as they see multiple proposals come across their desk every single year. And we've already developed the alpha version of our software, and we're working with satellite manufacturers of both the United States and Europe, both new space and old space, if you will, um, and some of the universities to develop and fine tune our software. Um, we've also gone through a couple of accelerator programs, Lightspeed Innovations and uh, Nextcubed, and uh, we're working with them to bring this product to the market, fine tune it, bring on customers. Uh, we've also gone through phase one of the NSF i program, when we've won multiple pitch competitions, um, and we're incubated at UC San Diego uh, in an IP free zone uh, there in La Jolla. Uh, so, as I said, we've already released the alpha version of our software. We will have the beta version of our software done by the end of the summer, by the end of September. And from there, we'd like to do our full product release at the beginning of next year. So, and we also have a really great team of engineers working on this, representing have cumulative experience from SpaceX, Moon Express, JP Morgan, and SSL. Um, and we have a strong advisory board to back us up to bring in the domain knowledge that we may not have. For example, in enterprise sales, information technology systems, uh, we have spacecraft systems engineering and very strong software engineering domain knowledge. So to bring back to the high level, uh, this, is, this is a problem that's not just facing spacecraft engineers. Believe it or not, as, as, as a species, we're building more and more complicated and integrated systems. This software could be used to help the launch industry, defense industry, robotics, automotive, and all kinds of different systems as we build a more connected and great society. But at the very end of this all, our goal isn't just to make engineers' jobs easier. Our goal is to start to abstract some of these, some of these things so we can lower the per unit cost of going to space, so we can make it easier uh, for us to go and do great and bold things. And if we're able to uh, lower the cost and increase the accessibility, if we lower that per unit cost of going to space, then we should be well on our way to human colonization of the moon and Mars. And that's what got me excited about it from, this, from the beginning. And I think that's why a lot of us are sitting in this room. And I think that's an exciting future. So with that being said, thank you so much. Uh, if you are interested in the software, please come talk to me in networking break. And thank you very much.